We have got a 12 game slate for tonight in MLB DFS, and it's one that will force us to make some decisions because there are 12 games and there are a lot of really good pitchers. And we have to decide, you know, which ones we want to rank highest, which does mean we are probably nitpicking a bit on some of the better guys in the slate, which can feel a bit awkward and a bit sad to not slobber all over some really fun stories. But I do think that there are some some clear differences between guys. We're going to run through which guys I like most, why I'm not on some of the others, and hopefully get you set to win some money and kick off your weekend in grand fashion on Friday Night Slate. Welcome on into the solo shop. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire.com, here to break down Friday's 12-game main slate with locks set for 7.05 p.m. Eastern, for today. The first weather note, bit of a bummer out of course field for the Rockies and the Mets. It is supposed to be heavy snow. I do not think there is any chance they play this game. So I'm pursue- proceeding as if they won't. I'm frankly shocked it has not been postponed yet, but either way, uh, they're not going to play. So don't worry about the Coors game for tonight. There is a chance of rain in New York for the Yankees and the White Sox. Doesn't seem too bad, though, so they should be good to play there. And finally, in Cleveland, for the Guardians and Tigers, winds are out to center at 19 miles per hour. That is a bump up to batters in that game. We're going to preview this slate in just one second. But first, a quick reminder to make sure you are subscribed to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. Later on today, got a NASCAR podcast getting you set for Sunday's All-Star Race. We, of course, have NASCAR podcasts every week, USC with Austin Swain, PGA with myself and Brandon Gadula. To get all of those podcasts right as they are posted, search for the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed. Hit subscribe. If you like what you hear, leave us a rating and review as well. Also, FanDuel Racing is raising the stakes for new players during the Preakness Stakes with two exclusive offers. This Friday and Saturday, that's today, is your chance to win $100 on a $5 bet. That is 20 to 1 odds on any horse to win. Even if you pick the favorite, your exclusive odds are automatically applied to the first horse you pick to win on Friday or Saturday. Plus, with win bet insurance, you can get up to $5 back on all eligible races if your horse finishes second or third. Just download the FanDuel Racing app, create an account, and you are all set. It doesn't matter if you're new to horse racing or a season pro. The FanDuel Racing app is perfect for anyone. So get in on the action this Friday and Saturday with two exclusive offers only on the FanDuel Racing app. Pitching preview for this Friday main slate. Eric Lauer is the highest salary guy checking in at $10,400. Nestor Cortez is 10-2. Sean Minaya is $9,900. Tarek Skubal, 95. Robbie Ray, 91. It is a lefty. Uh, it's all lefties for today. We got Martin Perez, Julio Arias, Ranger Suarez, Daniel Lynch. They're all above 8,000. You do sprinkle in Paul Blackburn and Michael Walker in there, but it's just a lefty kind of day with all the lefties in the slate for today. So we're going to break down which guys I like most. It, it is tough because Lauer's amazing. Cortez, really fun story. And those guys I think are legit. I'm not nitpicking what they've done, but we got to find a way to narrow things down. And part of it could be that a lot of these guys are on the road. Cortez and Lauer are not. Uh, but we got two guys facing low strikeout opponents. That would apply uh, to... Scooble for today. It applies to a couple other guys as well. Tough matchup for Cortez. Lauer let a lot of hard contact. Two guys who are not facing low strikeout opponents are Robbie Ray and Sean Manaya. I'm going to wind up ranking those two first and second overall as a result. My top guy for tonight is Robbie Ray. So let's start here. He's facing the Red Sox. They have not hit lefties well so far in a small sample this year. They got a 73 WRC plus with a 24% strikeout rate on their current active roster. The WRC plus, I don't care about because it's just 289 plate appearances. That doesn't matter to me. But the strikeouts do matter. Those stabilize a lot faster and I could put more faith in that. And it says it's a decent spot here for Ray. I'm also convinced that Ray is fully back to being his old self. The velocity was very low to start the year to the point where it was a big concern, but it's almost back to where it was last year. Now over his past four starts, the peripherals have spiked along with the velocity. He has a 33% strikeout rate in those starts. He has eight plus strikeouts and three out of four. I've got Ray projected for 8.6 strikeouts tonight. And even with the stiff competition, the good pitching slate, that is the best mark among all starters. So there is risk because the Red Sox have hitters 
who are good against lefties. Trevor Story just had a triple dong last night. And Robbie Ray is on the road. He's at Fenway, stuff like that. That does matter, but I like his upside most. So I'm going to rank Ray first for that reason and make him my top pitcher of the night. Manaya will be second. He's facing the Giants. They're also another dangerous team. But being a lefty does neutralize a lot of their best hitters. Brandon Crawford, Brandon Belt, et cetera, et cetera. Jock Peterson. They have a 24% strikeout rate against lefties. Manaya is also going super, super deep into games. He has gone 110, 99, and 104 pitches his past three starts. He had 12 strikeouts in that most recent game. And that one was on the road against the Braves. That's a very tough spot. I'd rather be in this matchup against the Giants than that one against the Braves. And Manai has been really good overall this year. Across seven starts, he has a 3.18 skill interactive ERA, 29% strikeout rate. He has let up some earned runs, and that could happen again here because, again, it's San Francisco. You know, they're a good offense still, despite being a little lefty heavy. But it's in San Francisco. The, the park helps a lot here. It's 65 degrees tonight, which is not the coldest on the slate. Um, it is second coldest among the games I'd expect to play if we toss out Coors with all the snow. But overall, Manaya checks a lot of boxes. I've got him projected for 7.7 strikeouts. That is second most in the slate behind just Robbie Ray. And that's enough for me to rank him in this second slot as well. We'll talk about Lauer. We'll talk about Cortez and things to watch. But for me, it is going to be Ray 1, Manaya 2. Because we have so many good studs for today, I don't really want to go in the value range. But if you do want to value, and I don't think he's totally off the radar, I actually think there is some reason to consider Aaron Savali at $6,800. He's facing the Tigers, and that's a admittedly a big part of this because they have just a 70 WRC plus against righties with an 093 ISO and a 25% strikeout rate, low walk rate, bad numbers across the board. The key number there, the most important number there is actually the power number, the ISO. Because Savali's batted ball numbers are really bad, I need to use him only against teams that can't hit for a lot of power. The Tigers are exactly that. But the strikeouts have been on the rise recently here for Savali. And I think the explanation for that is his curveball. In the first three games, Savali threw the curveball just 17% of the time. Over his past three, that's up to 29%. And that's awesome. The whiff rate on that pitch is 42% according to Baseball Savant. The strikeout rate in that sample is 24%. It's not lighting the world on fire, but it's a lot better than it was. And it's been against some pretty good teams. Hard contact is still very much there. So he's not over all of his issues but he's a lot better than he was. And now he's in a very good matchup at home. He's $6,800. I think he has some really good upside. So I'll give him swipes at times, but mostly studs for me. I think that I'd cap it around 10% for Savali and dedicate the rest, the other 90% to the studs he mentioned. If you want to go hardest at Ray and Manaya and then sprinkle in some of the other guys, you can do that there, but mostly focus on the studs at pitcher for tonight. Let's move now to the stacks. And it feels like we've been stacking the Yankees a lot recently, but it's working. So I'm just going to keep on doing it once again and stack them here. They're facing Dallas Keuchel. And if you are ever perusing White Sox Twitter, you will know why we're stacking against Dallas Keuchel. Keuchel has struggled a lot this year. His ERA is 5.54 with a skill interactive ERA of 5.05. He has almost as many walks as strikeouts. He is still getting in typical Dallas Keuchel fashion, Really good batted ball numbers, got a low hard hit rate and a low fly ball rate, but it hasn't done enough to erase the rest of his profile. Now, he did just shut down the Yankees last week. He held them scoreless for five innings, but he had three walks compared to three strikeouts. They've now seen him recently, and he's going on the road to make this start. This will be just the third road start for Keuchel in seven starts. He let up seven earned runs and 10 total runs in one of those games. And the Yankees are a very good team against lefties. 193 ISO, 114 WRC+. plus. So, yeah, he shut them down last time out. But I have faith they'll figure it out this time around and be able to exploit the issues that Keuchel has despite the good batted ball numbers. So I will be high on the Yankees once again against Keuchel for today. That means having a lot of Glaber Torres in my lineups once again. Obviously, last year was brutal for Torres. But it seems like he's a different guy this year. His ISO is 196. He has a 50% hard hit rate and a 43% fly ball rate. Strikeout rate's down. Really good advanced numbers for Glaber Torres. And his salary 
is still just $2,500. I've been using him more than I've wanted to recently. Like I've just wound up there because of stacking the Yankees a lot and low salary guys, stuff like that. But here I'm very okay with that. Um, I, I think that Torres will wind up being one of my higher exposure players in the slate. If you want to jam in a high salary pitcher with Judge, Stanton, et cetera, et cetera, she's Glaber Torres. Makes it a lot easier. And I'm very okay with doing that for tonight. For our number two stack, I've stacked against Daniel Lynch a couple times this year, and it hasn't gone well. Uh, his ERA is 3.30, but the batted ball numbers are still very stackable. And I think I want to keep giving it a crack for that reason, which means stacking the Twins tonight. Lynch has made six starts. He has let up 85 balls in play across those six starts. Batted ball numbers tend to stabilize a little bit higher than that, but it's a decent sample. We can get some early takeaways from what he's doing. The big thing is that Lynch is still living dangerously. His hard hit rate is 48% with a 52% fly ball rate. Typically, that is the recipe for dingers. And that hasn't been the case yet because Lynch did let up three home runs in his first start, but he's let up one home run his past five starts combined. That is despite facing some really good competition. It could be that Lynch is just skilled at avoiding calamity and his expected ERA is under four, which is... It lends credence to the fact that maybe he's actually good at this, but I'm not quite sold yet. Lynch has a 23% strikeout rate with a 10% walk rate. That's not quite enough if he's going to struggle with balls in play. I'm going to bet we see some regression here, and I will stack the Twins to see if that is the case for tonight. Within those Twin stacks, I would be careful with Kyle Garlick. He will start, but he leaves games early often against lefties. He left one inning or one game in the third. That was due to injury. Disregard that one. But since returning, he left in the fifth after starting one game. Before the injury, he left in the sixth. He left in the seventh a couple games. He has had four plate appearances in a game just once this year. So I'm not totally off of garlic because he could dong uh, and pay off in one plate appearance. He actually, I mentioned that he left a game in the sixth before his injury. He had two home runs in that game before the sixth inning. So it could happen, but... I would proceed with caution as a result. Not the kind of guy I, I tend to use. I prefer guys who will stay in the game. Give me five plate appearances, four or five. Garlic's probably not going to be that guy. You need him to go yard pretty fast. I know he's minimum salary, but I don't think salary will be a key thing for tonight. So I'm going to try to be underweight on him if I can. Even within my twin stacks, I just think uh, stacking the twins without garlic might be a bit contrarian. So we'll give it a run and see what happens for tonight. The third stack is going to be the Rays. I think they set up well against Tyler Wells. Uh, this game is in Baltimore. And in the past, we've always viewed Tampa Bay going to Baltimore as being a massive park factor upgrade. That's not the case anymore. With the with left field being moved back, with it you needing to like be Byron Buxner, Aaron Judge, or, or John Carlos Stanton to clear that wall, it's not a park factor upgrade anymore. But I do still like the spot overall. Wells has been decent in his move to the rotation. He has a 4.18 ERA. His skill interactive ERA is 4.23, which is not bad, but he's letting up a ton of balls in play, like a lot. And a lot of those are in the air. Wells has a 16% strikeout rate. His walk rate is 3%, which means there is a ball in play about 80% of the batters he faces. 46% of that 80% are fly balls. Only 36% have been hard hit so far, and that's a low number. That's been the strength of Wells, which is why the ERA is pretty good. But last year, that number was 41%. And if we see that hard hit rate creep up to around 40%, he'd be in some trouble. Wells has also gotten a bit lucky with his schedule because three of his seven starts have come against the bottom six teams in WRC plus against righties. None of those three have an ISO above 118 against righties. He's facing the Rays tonight, and they're not great in that department either. They got a 102 WRC plus and a 142 ISO, so they're not elite but they're better than a lot of what Wells has faced so far. I think it's a good enough spot where we should give them a spin here and see if the Rays can bring some regression Tyler Wells' way. I do think it's pretty wild uh, what Kevin Kiermaier has done from a peripherals perspective this year. He doesn't have the best results, but he's sitting for power again against righties. He's got a 39% fly ball rate. That is the highest mark of his career. He has a 219 ISO, also his highest of his career. And those numbers do stabilize kind of fast. We've seen Kiermaier batting sixth or so against righties. I also do like the pop that Brett Phillips and Francisco Mejia have shown in small samples. They do strike out a lot, but less of a concern against Wells. 
So if we get Phillips, Mejia, Kiermaier in a good enough spot, you know, they slide up in the order a bit. I'm open to it. A lot of power there. Uh, but I think with Kiermaier specifically, I'm changing my mind on him uh, from where I was at before. Uh, I think that he's actually kind of an option for DFS with where things stand right now. Let's go now to things to watch. Do you want to touch more on those pitchers? I did not mention in the top section, Nestor Cortez, Eric Lauer, Tarek Skubal. For Cortez, it's a repeat matchup. He just saw the White Sox last week, and there are a lot of lefty bashers in that lineup. So it's not a situation where I think that Cortez will regress. I think he's legit. I just don't like the situation that he's in right now. For Lauer, it's about the hard contact. He's still letting up a lot of that. Uh, obviously, you don't worry about that as much against Washington as you do with other teams, but it's still a pretty big concern. So I do think that Lauer definitely works. Also, don't have the highest like pitch count projection on him. It's a 94 for me. But uh, just you know, keeping in mind that strikeout rate could be a bit concerning uh, for him, um, or that uh, that uh, the hard contact could be a bit concerning for him. I've got him at seven point six strikeouts, so he'd probably would be number three for me behind Ray and Manaya. But that's the one thing that kept me from being higher. Scoobles facing Cleveland, pretty low strikeout team, twenty percent strikeout rate against lefties. I uh, mentioned Cortez against the White Sox; their strikeout rate is eighteen percent. It's just two low strikeout matchups, and I've got other options. So that's why I prefer Ray and Manaya. I would go with Lauer next, followed by probably Scoobal over Cortez. But I think all five are in play. And I think, again, I would prefer to pay up over going with Savali, even though I do like him a bit, a bit as a value for tonight. Finally, I want to get some exposure to the right-handed Orioles for today. They're facing Ryan Yarbrough. Uh, he'll be the, the long boy after Jalen Beeks is the opener for today. Yarbrough traditionally has been very good at, at generating soft contact. Hasn't been getting that as much this year. And it's a small sample, but it is noteworthy that he's sliding back a bit there. If that were to stick, if he continues to struggle with hard contact, he'll probably have some bad numbers this year. So I'll dabble in the Orioles. I'm not confident enough in them from an offensive perspective to put them in the top three stacks. But, you know, I think they're worth looking at for today for sure. Okay, let's finish up with some dinger calls for today. I mentioned the Twins, which means I am contractually, morally, spiritually obligated to make Byron Buxton my home run call for today. So Byron Buxton, the home run call, facing Lynch, a lot of fly balls, a lot of hard contact. It's Byron Buxton. What else could you possibly need? The fun one, it's not great from a matchup perspective because, again, Dallas Keuchel does do a good job of suppressing hard contacts and suppressing fly balls. So... Not really a spot you want to look for dingers all that often, but I will go with Labor Torres just because, again, I like the batted ball numbers, gets to face a lefty here. I think the power numbers will come. I'm on board with him. So home run calls for today, Byron Buxton and Glaber Torres. That is all that we have here for today on the solo shop. But again, we got more coming up later on today here on the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed, NASCAR and UFC to get you set for your weekend, you can find those over on the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed. Hit subscribe if you want to get them as they go up. And if you like what you hear, leave us a rating and review as well. If you've got questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. Big thank you to everyone for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your DFS lineups. Have a fantastic weekend. We'll talk to you once again on Monday for another week of MLB DFS. This has been the solo shot right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.